What's up, everyone? Nanman here with another modern commentary of some cool gameplay from my LGS. This is going to be Yogmoth versus Red Prison, Mono Red Prison. It's got other names. Uh, Eight Moon is another name that it kind of goes by, but I'm an old school modern player, so I kind of refer to it as Mono Red Prison because it's. It runs Blood Moon effects. It runs Chalice of the Void. Like it's just like a, a I'm gonna lock you out of the game in a prison style deck and then go from there. Uh, you guys know Yogmoth. It's a uh, it's the green black like rock style value. <laughs> yeah. We've got uh, like pure gas, but uh, not enough mana. Maybe I don't know. I saw uh, a Sheldred in hand. I sh looks like at least one bowmaster so maybe that's like the mm, one lander maybe but we've got a a dork to go with it here so delighted halfling is is our mana dork so that is the difference between like older versions when this deck first started being created to now because lord of the rings gave us a new mana dork to kind of help us out and there is a little bit of glare on this one here i've experimenting with where we're doing our recordings at the uh, lgs um, so it seems like a lot of people enjoyed watching the Mono Blue Tron matchup that we had last week. Uh, we are going to be having another one of those coming up next week because we're you know trying to get a, as many players and many decks as possible for you guys to be able to enjoy. Because Modern is actually a pretty diverse format, uh, especially at like a LGS level. But yeah, this is this is what we're talking about the uh, the scariness of of this Red Prison deck or this like Eight Moon deck. Megas the Moon's coming out here, and we're going to see the response of the Orcish Bowmaster. So just going to do a little ping in and get some threats out on the board. Things are going to be dangerous, though, because now you're stuck with Delated Halfling as your mana source, which is tapping for colorless, unless you're casting on legendaries. But like, even then, like you're locked out now of... Oh, all right, here's a, here's a mountain. <laughs> Let me do something with three mountains. Doesn't really exist in a green black deck. Uh, so it's like that's the debate. Okay, is there any way that I could piece something together with what I have? Um, and that's why like this red prison deck can be scary in current modern and could steal some games off people just because of like if you're able to lock people out and then capitalize on it if you're locking them out early enough you can definitely uh you know steal some wins from people magus the moon or blood moon allows you to kind of have that little bit of staying power here's the chalice we were talking about earlier of that kind of lockout effect and just saying hey no one cost stuff's going to get played which you know that shuts off you know things like fatal push that shuts off things like um young wolf Thing, things like that that could be uh, a pain that you you might be like oh okay what are some things that i need to worry about f that's in green that's in black and so let's just shut off all of all of the one drops uh in the deck a little bit of graveyard hate here as a land and it's going to be a lot of this kind of land pass right now between both players as they're just sort of like stuck because it's like you have a bunch of one ones uh or, or even the, you know, Delighted Halfling is a 1-2. A so it's like you swing in, the Magus of the Moon still blocks favorably. It's a 2-2. Two -two. So it's like, yeah, look at this. Just sort of land, land, go. <laughs> and this this can be frustrating to play against, uh, especially when you're sitting down and you're going, okay, I... I don't want to just immediately scoop up just because someone played a uh, Magus of the Moon or Blood Moon. There might be some outs in here that I could hope for and try to go into. All right, we're going to do a little bit of channeling here. Make a couple of little spirits. Channel lands are a cool addition. I do like uh, that. Now, these spirits do not fly. if They're little 1-1s, one -ones, but that, the way this works is just kind of more blockers. Also, sacrifice outlets depending on how things go but just yeah <laughs> land go <laughs> shifting creatures aside maybe we're going to be playing something now but no not at the moment yeah 
Yawgmoth deck is a, still a very powerful deck, even if it's locked out here. Like, it's if there was a bunch of draw effects, like, oh, okay, that's why it's like it, we're in this like awkward spot of like, okay, we need a way to maybe try to draw into stuff. So there's our way to kind of blast it apart. And yeah, here we go. Okay, so now it's like, hey, I'm, I'm using Season Pyromancer to be able to kind of do some looting, discard two, draw two. Couldn't really afford to do that because I couldn't really use utilize uh or deal with the orc spell masters and that one little orc army because if i did i you know would get really big and things could not go so well for me you could just shoot my magus so like props to the red prison player for you know playing very consistently and we'll see like a little swing in do a little pokesies here he said i'll block one kill one And we'll cast, boom, another ritual, three mana, cast a giant. Yeah, if you've played any type of like mono red deck that's not a burn deck, you kind of know just like there are some nuances to so even the burn decks. There are nuances and sequencing matters and stuff like that. And that like, we got to see just like, okay, it is a lot more of this, like hold up and wait. Uh, we're going to activate our land. Very few man lands are still played in, um, modern nowadays, but you know, they do find a little bit of homes and things like, so here we go. I want to say it's like cave of the bug beer, bug bear or something like that. Making goblins. And just sort of like turning creatures sideways. So it, it really, at this point, our Yawgmoth players is just kind of like accepted that this is the his fate, and just sort of like, yeah, okay, that's fine. Let's let's take a couple hits, and then we'll just scoop it up, go to game two. Like this also like is that discipline of players. <laughs> they, I don't know if you can hear that. The player is like, this is your fault that this game lasted the way it did. And it's like, listen, I was drawing lands and I couldn't close it out. I'm sorry. No, but that, like, also that discipline of even though I've, I'm fighting a losing battle and I don't expect to be able to win, if I drag this out later, I get more information about what is in this mono red prison deck and can adapt and sideboard accordingly to kind of deal with it so prison players up 1-0 of course Yawgmoth will be going first hoping for another little bit of ramping we could see you know aggressively mulliganing or something like that depending on if we don't have mana dorks um, also might adjust our fetches to make sure that we're fetching a couple of the basics because you know many of the decks do run at least you know a basic here a basic there so we'll see we'll see what the what the play is looks like yawgmouth player potentially keeping that i think he's just waiting or did actually is are, are we in the mulligan phase no okay so he's waiting for his opponent to get his cards first and then he'll be deciding Which, you know, the if you are familiar with the evolution of the Yawgmoth deck, it's kind of had this nice little progression over time of going from, like, a pure combo -y deck to a more mid-range deck that we see now. But um, <laughs> even though I'm going second, I'm already going to start with a land and play with Gemstone Cavern coming out. And Surveil Land. We'll throw whatever was there in the graveyard. I like the surveil lands as additions to to modern. I think they they've added stuff to very specific decks, and it's it's pretty cool to see. No ritual to like into a moon this turn, because that is the kind of benefit of running the gemstones in there. Gemstone cavern, of course, lets you have that little uh, counter on it, so you can be able to tap and get mana so it's like basically goes yes i'm going second but i'm essentially equal if not ahead of you in lands now oh look he was baiting deciding about the basics we saw at least two force there does he opt for the swamp instead maybe that's what he's 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 reversing it towards but there's so much green i don't know 
Like, what do you get for going for the swamp here? I guess it's safer and lets you cast Sheldred and lets you cast Orcish Bowmasters, but like, and gets you easier to cast Yogma. So, like, yeah, I guess the, the big, big payout stuff, and we see Sheldred and we see uh, Bowmasters in hand, so that makes sense. Oh, does he have two in hand? All right, Giant's going to come out and squish that for two damage there. Apatra coming out. 2-2, two, two, makes snakes when it deals damage because it can put a minus one counter on something Turn make snakes. So, not bad. All right, there's the ritual. Oh, okay. So, this is, yeah, all right, this is a problem. All right, play my accomplice in here. Pay one red. You got to put a planeswalker. So we see Luca coming out here, and the way this is going to work out is we're going to minus two, exile target creature you control, reveal cards from the top of your library until you reveal a creature card with higher converted mana cost. So we're looking for something that has more converted mana cost than three. There's only one creature in the deck that we care about, and there it is. These cards go on the bottom, and now we have. <laughs> You know, a nice little Ember Cool. How does that sound? That sounds like not what we can deal with. Yeah, there's a a young wolf at the top there. Like you really need that. What's that that new sideboard card people are running? That's like super super flexible. There it is, right there. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So this like sacrifices. Uh, there you go. Pick your poison. Each opponent uh sacrifice a creature with flying. That's the only out that he would have against that. All right. It's also a super great card in this matchup because your opponent's playing Blood Moons so or doing these things where you like sacrifice an enchantment and stuff. But yeah, that was that you know very quick, very fast paced uh, episode, guys. Hope you enjoyed it. You know, we'll start putting up deck lists. I got to start asking the players to provide their deck lists. Haven't done that yet. One of these days we'll do it. But hope you guys enjoyed it. Leave some comments. Let me know what you think. And of course, we've got some more exciting games coming up in the next couple of weeks. So make sure you are subscribing, hitting the follows, all that good stuff. Spread the word. Let people know. And that's going to do it for us. Thanks so much for tuning and watching, and I'll see you all next game.